Hi and welcome. My name is Brad McLean and I'm co-founder of Regulation Asia. Pinstripe bankers of yesteryear would be hard pressed to recognize their once state industry. Today it's roiled by disruption, shifting regulation and forced to continue to reinvent itself long after the global financial crisis. Recent events continue to demonstrate how institutions are challenged by risk and regulation, pushing for better data and modeling to overcome the shortcomings, the past and current challenges. And this is what brings us here today. I'm sitting with Julian Chesser and Sage Patel from IHS Market to find out how the pandemic has affected the markets and how processes like trade reporting have been impacted and what firms can do to cope with these ongoing challenges. Welcome. Julian, to start, I'd like to kick off the discussion by asking you about what you see are the key regulatory market changes that market participants need to be aware. So I think we have to start with the impact of COVID itself. Uh, whether that's the well-documented acceleration of cloud technologies, the desire to digitize much more workflow, uh, including those loose ends that nobody really managed to conquer. But more importantly, has COVID triggered a review of the fundamental business and operating model, which is already undergoing, I would argue, quite transformational change. But this is a period where thoughtful reflection, whether it's in infrastructure, in data, and in services, has never been more paramount. We also mustn't forget eyeball reform, which is the more, most fundamental structural change for derivatives ever, uh, including significant repapering requirements across multiple parties, significant repricing requirements, and perhaps most importantly, Anticipation, anticipation of new risks around the basis between different asset classes that have never been considered in the same way before. The third big impact is in terms of regulatory reporting reform, which I know we're going to come on to. Excellent. I mean, Sage, from your perspective, what are some of the challenges market participants have faced in recent months amid the ongoing disruptions related to the pandemic? Um, hey, Brad, um, thanks very much for the opportunity here. Uh, I think if we think about the landscape that we, we live within now, um, clearly um, the, 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 the adoption of global regulatory requirements is one. Um, given the challenges that we faced over the last few months, um, some of the reforms are still continuing at great speed. Um, however, there have been some delays um, to some of the rules. Some of these rules have also meant that organizations have been scrambling to meet these tight, tight debt, um, timelines um, within the current environment that we're in. Um, reforms in local markets are predominantly driven by APAC regulators. Uh, adoption of best practices, which has been demanded by the, the global investors, and especially to meet some of their governance models that they have. And again, with the scenario that we find ourselves in to better manage the risk, um, and again, with the backdrop of historically challenging liquidity conditions. And then finally, I would say um, the heart of the challenge has been really transparent data and multi-asset -class, multi class valuations, which is really the key to solving some of the operational and regulatory requirements that are needed. You've raised a really interesting point around data. Could you elaborate a little bit more on the industry challenges we're seeing from a, a market data perspective, especially from the context of some of the challenges and disruptions you're seeing? Well, um, yeah, thanks, Brad. Um, APAC in its nature is fragmented, diverse, and illiquid. If we think about the lack of trade repositories, um, active local secondary markets, means that the sources for data are very limited. Um, secondly, market data is a very key component that we're seeing in today's world to help support the regulatory headwinds that, as well as providing the transparency, the high quality information that's needed to really satisfy um, the change in nature of these APAC local markets. Now, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, closely related to some of these data challenges are the processes that stem from trade reporting. Julian, could you just walk us through some of the reporting challenges firms are facing? The reg reporting regime since they were initiated in 2012 through Dodd-Frank have frankly been exhausting. Uh, the bad news is we sort of think of that as phase one. Uh, CFTC, EMEA, MIFIN and, and a whole array of uh, regimes in Asia uh, with slightly different flavors and to pick up Sage's point that, that fragmentation really is the four. We feel we're entering phase two 
which is both a mixture of harmonizing existing regimes, initiatives like CPIM, OSCO, common data elements, which I think are broadly welcomed. The problem is that will take some time to deliver. Meanwhile, new changes are occurring. DTC re-architecture, CFTC new rules next year. And from an infrastructure provider perspective, we've seen things like the CME abide withdrawal. This all creates more uncertainty and creates more cause for reflection on whether the phase one solutions are really fit for purpose on a forward looking basis. And that really centers around three requirements. First and foremost, control and accuracy. After all, compliance with regulation is what we're all here to do. Secondly, can those solutions scale without firms having to continually plow more and more money into it? And thirdly, can we take some of these capabilities and drive some business benefit so the business leaders aren't considering this just a tax on their business? Now, you've mentioned compliance, scalability, and underlying business drivers. Now, given your unique experience across the region, how has IHS Market been working with clients to help them manage some of these challenges? Yes, so we realized very early this is a long game. So we started by building foundations on our industry leading platforms such as MarketWire and DS Match. And we built capability enriched with very sophisticated uh, tools such as determination. Where exactly do I have to transmit a trade to? Then we realized we needed to leverage our expertise, our experience, and our network. Many firms are attracted to our services purely because of that, that people element, which we find very important, not just to raise awareness of existing challenges and solutions, but also to future-proof against some of those changes I mentioned. And then thirdly, we're in a lucky position to be able to constantly invest in our products. We purchased Katina Technologies here in Singapore earlier this year. We built a new SFTR solution pretty much from scratch that has now become a market leader, the market leader in short order. And thirdly, we've continually driven towards more value for clients through the combination of network, technology, and data to, we, to ensure we are a long-term trusted partner for regulatory reporting needs. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing that innovation has been a key in ensuring that market participants are able to work through the crisis. I guess, not only surviving, but thriving. Uh, Sage, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, look, uh, I think um, the nature of the, or the dynamics of the region and how um, our customers are behaving means that we have to adapt and we have to innovate. You know, development of you know, new risk platforms, reporting platforms, as Julian has mentioned, that are really geared to some of the local requirements that we see. Some of the regulatory headwinds that are coming through are also you know, driving the requirements from some new segments of the market. So the local regional banks, um, you know, the, 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 the tier two um, type of um, organizations. Um, and then having said that, the, the continued build out of our local market data. Um, and again, this is the coverage across cash markets and derivative markets where we're seeing um, our clients now really moving into spaces which you could deem as exotic instruments. Um, and again, the challenges that that has to the, the liquidity question in, in, in the region. Now, let's have our crystal ball moment here, looking 12 to 18 months out. From your perspective, what are the main challenges you expect to see have the biggest impact on financial markets? And, and what sh should firms be doing today to help address these challenges? Julian, what are your thoughts? Biggest challenge has to be the uncertainty, whether it's geopolitical, pandemic, market volatility. And what firms really need to do is take a, a calm, sober assessment of that uncertainty. They do need to make some decisions, but retain as much agility as possible. And above all, they've got to pick great partners. Faith, what are your thoughts? I think regulation. I mean, quite simply, this is going to be something that's going to affect all, of, all aspects of our region, um, all industry segments, um, and being prepared. Um, looking at how do you actually adopt to the rules, um, building out your own teams, the resources that you need, um, identifying the right vendors, the partners to take on this. So I think regulation is, is going to be a real driver over the next 
two years or so. Um, data, again, we talk, we've spoken briefly about how data is going to really play a big part of, of that whole regulation and adoption of the regulation. So it's really up to us to really help start to, to build out data sets that speak to these local requirements. What we're hearing is unpredictability, regulation, partnership. Well, with that, that's all we have for today. So thank you both for joining us. I look forward to speaking with you again soon.